Every year, from the hundreds of college football teams in the U.S., only one is considered to be the best in the country at the end of the season. Last year, the early favorites faded rather quickly in a season of upsets, and the Tigers of Clemson captured that coveted number one rating. Tonight, we're going to take you back to the heart of the football season and the color and excitement of the college gridiron. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons tangled with the Clemson Tigers in what would prove to be a most memorable ACC game. Clemson came into this game with an undefeated record, ranked third in the nation. Not too many of the preseason football sages had expected the Clemson Tigers to make much of a showing. But with outstanding talent like Perry Tuttle, Jeff Bryan, and Homer Jordan, the Tigers had knocked off Georgia early on and run rampant through the ACC to compile a 7-0 record coming into the game you'll see tonight. As the Tigers would eventually prove, they were a severely underrated team in 1981. Let's return now to October last, Memorial Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. Jim Phillips and Scott Shannon on the call, Wake Forest and visiting White, and the Clemson Tigers in their ubiquitous home art. Here is his boot, high, end over end. Oh, yeah. Going to be great. No, Owen steps in front and takes it about eight yards deep in the end zone. They'll touch it down. It will come out to the 20. That's where it will be moved in play first and 10 by the Deacons in this football game this afternoon. Gary Schofield, the quarterback, will have Dan Dougherty, the fullback, and Dwayne Owens, the halfback, working behind him. His flanker back will be Kenny Duckett. Tim Ryan will be the split end, and Phil Denfield will work from tight end. Across the front, Gardner, Zaluki, Martin, Slensky, and Baldinger for the Demon Deacons. Right off the bat, let's watch that Clemson defense, Andy Hedden, and I'm sure that Andy maybe will be dropping back as an extra linebacker defensive back. Offsides against the Tigers, declined. Wake will take it on the 20. Well, with Donald Igwebuike having the wind at his back, I assume that Wake figured they couldn't do much better than be at the 20-yard line. Here, here it is, forefront. Ryan goes far to the left side. They send in motion from the right. Back to throw Schofield over the middle. He's got a man wide open, and that's Denfield. His tight end. He's up over the 30, gets out to the 32-yard line before he is knocked down. And up defensively was Danny Triplett for the Tigers. So Schofield wasting no time, throwing on first down, finding Denfield, and it's a 12-yard pickup for the Deacons. Out goes Owens. Bill Ruffner has checked in as a tight end. They'll work with a single back behind. That's Doherty. Now they go wing both sides. Schofield dropping to throw again. Has time. Now being rushed. Fires over the middle. Is complete once again out of the 40. However, dropped at that point. Incomplete pass. Denfield again was the intended receiver. They went with no running backs behind. They were double wing. Ruffner went to the left side. They brought Ryan to the right. And it's back to the 32-yard line where it will be second down and 10 for the Deacons. And good outside pressure from old 99, Jeff Bryant. Got to Schofield just as he delivered the ball. The ball was well thrown, but shaken loose. Just underway, first quarter, no score. All right, set to go once again. This time they'll have a slot on the left side. Baumgartner goes wide left. Ruffner inside of him, starts in motion. Schofield drops the throw over the middle, completes this one to Ruffner. Ruffner down the sidelines at the 45, 50, into the Tiger, 44-yard line. And a flag goes down at that point as Terry Kennard comes across to make the play for the Tigers. Schofield wastes no time at all at the line of scrimmage. He gets his team out set quickly, and they move with the football. Got a face mask. So at the point of the tackle, the 44-yard line of the Tigers, Kennard called on a face mask grab, and it will move it 15 yards closer to the Tiger goal line. Baumgartner was a questionable starter, but he has been in there from the beginning here this afternoon. First and 10 for the Demon Deacons. They're at the 29-yard line of the Tigers. Wide to the left side goes Bucky, uh, Kenny Duckett. Set backfield, split this time as Schofield drops the throw, rolling to his right under pressure, flips a pass that's incomplete, intended for Owens, bounced to him on one hop. Tigers that time got good pressure by Bill Smith, who was coming hard. And that forced Schofield to dump that ball a little quicker than he wanted to. So it remains at the 29 of the Tigers, where it will be second down and 10. Out goes Ryan, back in comes Baumgartner. 14 minutes, 14 seconds remaining on the scoreboard clock in the first quarter. Wide right, Baumgartner. To the left side goes Kenny Duckett. They'll work from an eye formation this time with Denfield, a wing on the left side. He goes in motion. Now they split the backfield. 
Schofield up under center, takes out, drops the throw, good rush on him, and coming straight up the middle was Jeff Davis on a linebacker, Red Dog, and he gets to Schofield to bounce him down back at the 36-yard line. Well, that were, is tackle number 400 in the career of Jeff Davis. Boy, there was no secret. Everybody in the stadium knew he was coming that time. Really got to Schofield before he could drop two or three steps. So it is back at the 36-yard line where it is third down and 17 yards to go. Again, they are wide to the right side. Now they send Duckett in motion from a slot right. Split backfield, Schofield dropping the throw. Big rush. He is going to be fumbling the football. A scramble for it. Tigers have it. Dan Benish falls on it at the 49-yard line. It was William Perry who got through to hit Schofield, and there is a flag back at the 44-yard line. Jim, I really think the flag was thrown after the fumble was made. We'll have to wait and see here. Holy cow, did big middle guard William Perry, all 295 pounds of him, come through there. And did Dan Benish get to that loose football when Perry jarred it out of Schofield's hands? The Tigers take over. The call was holding against the Deacons, and Clemson has it at midfield. Now we... Those of you who have never seen Perry before, now you know why they call him Refrigerator. GE. He's built like a block of ice. Wide to the right side goes Gilliard. Tuttle splits off left end. Homer Jordan has McCall and Austin in the eye. 50-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Austin on a sweep to his left. He's at the 45 into the 44-yard line. Hit there by John Swider, the right cornerback of Wake Forest. But it's a six-yard pickup by Cliff Austin on the first offensive carry of the afternoon by the Tigers. 13 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. First quarter, no score. Wake came out throwing, but the Tiger defense stiffened. They forced the fumble. Magwood goes wide to the right side. Stock still is split to the left. Homer Jordan has them in a split backfield now. Jordan takes out. This time gives to Austin again. He finds a hole, comes up over the 40, moves into the 38, down to the 37-yard line. That is knocked down there by Steve Hammond, middle linebacker of Wake Forest. They'll spot the football at the 38-yard line. You know, Jim, last week when North Carolina State took the pitch sweep away from the Tigers, they went to the split backs, the fullback, and uh, the tailbacks all got good yardage tackle to tackle. They're back in the eye now. Jerry Gilliard wide to the right. Perry Tuttle is flanked left. Eye formation again. McCall and Austin behind Jordan. Pitch to Cliff Austin. His third straight carry. He's got some room at the 30. Austin cuts outside at the 25. The 20. Gets a block, but is caught from behind in at the 15-yard line by Ronnie Burgess, who came across defensively for the Deacons. Cliff Austin doing some brilliant open field running. And Jerry Gilliard, the wide receiver, was out in front throwing some big blocks. Oh, nice, nice play. Austin really came into his own about midway in the season, much the same as McSwain did. Now big production out of the tailback. Magwood left, Tuttle right, split backfield behind Homer Jordan at quarterback. This time Jeff McCall, 10, down to the seven-yard line goes Jeff McCall, hit by Mike Hodgen, the right defensive tackle for the Demon Deacons. They will spot the football at the eight-yard line. That's a pickup of six. It'll be second and four for the Tigers. The Deacons playing a lot of young people. They have three freshmen starting. They have lost four players in the last two weeks. All four of those lost in the Maryland game. Gilliard wide to the left. Tuttle goes out to the right side. Split backfield again behind Homer Jordan. Homer gives to Austin. Austin meets a stone wall as he gets it into the seven. One correction, Scott. Three freshmen in the secondary, two up front. They have five freshmen in that defense. Uh, they lost their leading tackler, and they also lost their leading uh, interceptor on the year. And two other players also went down the Maryland game. That was a very, very costly loss for the Demon Deacons. Third and three for the Tigers at the seven-yard line. Stock still comes wide to the left side. Jordan sets them down in the I formation. They go wide right as well. Jordan takes out, pitch back to Cliff Austin, looking for running room. He gets inside the five to the four and should have enough for a first down. Austin got over the five, bowled forward to about the four, and that should be enough for a Tiger first down. Up defensively for the Deacons was Steve Hammond from middle linebacker and free safety Ronnie Burgess. It is a first and goal Tigers at the four-yard line of the Demon Deacons. Ten minutes, 54 seconds remaining, first quarter, no score. 
wide to the right. The Tigers send Magwood. Tuttle comes flanked to the left side. I formation behind Jordan at quarterback. Homer pitching back oh, to Austin. He's got go. running room. Touchdown. Austin sweeping to the right side, and no one was even going to get to him. He didn't need the block from Magwood, who was out there. Cliff sprints on in. Four-yard touchdown run. Tigers on top, 6-0. Bob Pauling on to try the extra point. He has a string of 25 consecutive extra points. Well, Wake Forest that time gambling just a little bit. Everybody in tight. The play was to the outside, and Austin made it look so easy. He is so quick. We're ready to hold as we await the snap and Pauling's kick here at the Valley. The snap back, the spot, the kick is up, the kick is good. 26 in a row for Pauling. Time out on the field with 10.40 left in the first quarter to score. Clemson 7, Wake Forest nothing. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Cliff Austin scooting around the right end for Clemson's first touchdown in this game may well have set the tone for things to come. The passing attack behind Gary Schofield of Wake Forest would have to heat up, or the potent, balanced Tiger offense could easily dominate this game. Let's return now for Clemson's second possession of the game. Following a stalled Wake Forest drive, they had to punt, and the ball's at the midfield stripe. As we continue on the best of USA. Gilliard comes to the left, Tuttle goes to the right. Jordan has them down on the eye with McCall and Austin. In motion, Tuttle from right to left. Now Homer takes out, drops the throw. Quick win out to Tuttle on the left side. Perry's going to be hemmed in. He does get some yardage, however, as he fights his way forward for a couple to the 47-yard line, where Henderson three, the right cornerback, comes across to make the defensive play for the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. That was well defended. They knew it was coming. Uh, they've used that several times this year, and it's a very simple pass play designed to get Tuttle to the outside with his great speed and just let him turn it on. All right, Stockstill comes to the left side. Gilliard splits out right. They're in a split backfield behind Homer Jordan. Cliff Austin has the call, lots of room, over the 40, into the 35 to the 34-yard line. Cliff Austin found a gaping hole on the left offensive side and rambles into the 34-yard line for a first down. Well, Wake Forest, uh, both offensively and defensively along the front, they're getting eaten alive right now. Stock still wide to the right side. Magwood will slot there. They'll work from an eye formation. Is that McSwain in the tailback now? Or is uh, that still Cliff? That's, yeah, that's McSwain. Yeah. Here's Homer. He just went over the 3,000-yard mark career-wise, Scott, as he carries to the 24, close to enough yardage for a first down. He had 2,999 yards career before that. Well, Homer had such an awful day passing, and he will admit that, too, last week against State. Uh, but he did rush for 107 yards. A lot of people don't realize that Homer has that much yardage rushing. Well, not, not all of that yeah, rushing right. now. That's, yeah, that's, that's total, total offense. But a lot of that is rushing. All right, they'll stretch the chains. Did he get 10 yards or not? He not got quite. 9 yards and 11 and 3 quarters. No, make that 35 and 3 quarters inches. Didn't quite make it. Beat about an inch. But it's near the 24-yard line, near enough that we'll call that the line of scrimmage. 7.43 remains in the first quarter. Tigers on top, 7-0. Boy, that's the kind of first down yardage you like. Second and about as short as you can get. Tuttle comes to the near side. Magwood splits out right. High formation again behind quarterback Homer Jordan. Jeff McCall is at fullback. Chuck McSwain the tailback. Jordan now barks out his signals, takes, gives off to McSwain. There's the first down as Chuck fights his way to the 21-yard line. Is hit at that point by David Cox, the defensive end for the Deacons. Okay, so, Clemson has taken the lead now in first downs, four to three. We got all their first downs very, very early as Schofield came out throwing and threw well. Got him in the first 30 seconds. Yes. All right, Tuttle goes wide to the right side. Gilliard comes left. Austin's back in. They work from a split backfield now as Jordan at quarterback sets them down. Homer up under center, takes out. Jeff McCall, big hole, bursts straight ahead, crosses the 15 and moves into about the 13-yard line where he is hit by Mike Hodgson, the right defensive tackle. They'll rule, however, that his knee touched at the 15-yard line. So it's going to be about four yards needed for a first down here by the Tigers. 
Wake Forest continues to sit in that 4-3, and their linebackers are not very active at all. Now they move into a five front. Magwood right, Tuttle left. Eye formation, they shift. There's Austin moving into the right side of McCall. Back to throw, Homer. Here's the little alley-oop for Tuttle. Overshoots him. And Perry believes that he was uh, interfered with a bit by John Swider, but on a case where the ball is not catchable, they normally will not call a little push and shove match down there. And Homer lofted it too far out of bounds. Hey, one thing, uh, he did a darn good job of screening Tuttle from the ball, kept moving in the, toward that sideline. Gilliard going wide to the right side, Tuttle again comes left flank. Split backfield once more behind Homer Jordan as Tuttle goes in motion from left to right. It's third and four. Homer rolling to his right, trying to get outside, throwing. It is caught by Tuttle inside the five. He's out of bounds at the three-yard line. Malcolm Hairston there covering, but a perfectly delivered football by Homer Jordan. And Tuttle with the grab at the three, first and goal Tigers. Oh, nice play. In fact, some nifty footwork by Homer just to get away from the onrushing lineman. And a good route by Tuttle. He makes it look so easy. Stop. Worst is in along with Bubba Diggs. They'll work double tight end offense, and they'll bring Tuttle wide to the left side with a split backfield behind Homer Jordan. Jordan now takes out again, giving to Austin. Touchdown! Cliff Austin ups his TD total to two on the afternoon as he goes in from three yards out. And Bob Pauling once more coming on now will attempt to make it a 14 to nothing football game and will attempt his 27th consecutive placement after a touchdown since becoming a Clemson Tiger. He has 20 for 20 this year. He had six in a row to wrap up last season. We await the snap for ready spots, and Pauling's kick is true. So there's time out on the field with 6-13 remaining in the first quarter of play. The score, Clemson 14, Wake Forest nothing. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Wake Forest with the ball, 24-yard line. They started at their 20. They started at their 20. Now they started their 24. They have triple wide receivers to the left. They ride it off to their fullback. Dougherty goes straight ahead, gets out to the 26-yard line, and is hit there by William Perry. Triple wide outs on the left side by Wake Forest. They will show you every offensive alignment imaginable. 547 remains in the first quarter. It's 14-0, Tigers on top. Now to the left side goes Baumgartner. In the slot left is Ruffner. They'll work with one back behind. That's Doherty. Back to throw is Schofield. Has time, fires over the middle, completes this one to Ruffner. Ruffner up over the 30, 35, 40, and knocked down at the 41-yard line. Hollis Hall gets to him at that point to haul him down. But it's a first down for the Demon Deacons as Schofield that time had time to throw, and when he gets time, he's going to find someone to throw to. Boy, they run such intricate patterns, too. Their head coach last year, John Makovic, is now the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. That should tell you something about how complicated their offensive scheme of things is. All right, wide to the left goes Ryan. That's Greg. I beg your pardon. Schofield goes to throw again. Over the middle, deep. It is caught. And that's inside the 45-yard line. Tim Ryan, the split end on a crossover pattern. He was hit at that point by Hollis Hall once again. But it'll be enough for another first down for the Deacons. And, Scott, they're attacking right up the middle with their throws. Yeah, that's where the patterns are going. They're not trying the outside at all. They're getting over the linebacker drop and doing a good job of it. Let's see if the Tigers have a dog or a blitz on this time. As Schofield sets them down wide left and right. Back to throw, has time, over the middle he goes again. This time he completes it once more, and grabbing this one off is Michael Mullen, who is a tight end. So it is down to about the 37-yard line, where it'll be second and three. Now, I was talking to some of the coaches, Scott, prior to the game in the locker room. They said that if you saw 81 Mullen come in, expect Wake to run the football, but they threw to it. 
Ryan goes wide to the left side. They send Greg in motion from right to left. Schofield throwing while he's being hit. Has his man Mullen open over the middle. He's inside the 30 to about the 27. And Schofield was going down under pursuit that time when he threw off balance and found Mullen wide open. Well, we have a flag on the play. Offside Tigers declined by the Deacons. I got a couple of scores to pass along. North Carolina State 6, South Carolina 3, Ohio State 10, Purdue 7. Both those games in the second quarter. And it's Indiana 3, Michigan State nothing. They're just underway. Wake Forest threatening. Ryan goes wide to the left side. Greg flanks to the right. They have a split backfield behind Schofield. Rush on him. He fires. Has a man open. That's Ryan down at the 20, and he is immediately hauled down at that point. Tim Childers was over there defensively for the Tigers. Jeff Davis and Danny Triplett were coming hard that time, but they could not get to Schofield before he delivered the football. This young man for a sophomore has a lot of cool out there under pressure. I'll tell you what, he's got a quick arm, too. That time, I don't know how he got the pass off, but he did. Just three quick steps back, the quick throw, and he got the completion. Ryan wide to the right. Greg, slot to the right. They hand off to Doherty, who goes straight ahead and gets inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line where William Perry and Jeff Davis come across defensively for the Tigers. Three minutes, 29 seconds remaining. First quarter action here at the Valley, 14-0, Tigers on top. But Wake Forest now threatening as they have moved into the 17-yard line. Duckett comes wide to the right side. Ruffner is a slot right. They send Greg far left. Schofield again has one back behind. Throwing, and it is incomplete, and Andy Hedden had a good rush, as did Jeff Suttle on a safety blitz that time. And as a result, Schofield was forced to throw while on the run and underthrew his intended receiver, Kenny Duckett. So it comes back to the 17, where it's second down and 10 now for the Deacons. I think, really, to contain this Wake Forest uh, passing attack, they're going to have to blitz a lot today, Jim. May wear everyone out blitzing. Again, Doherty the only man behind. Duckett wide right. Bumgardner goes left. They have a slot right. That is Ruffner. Here is Schofield looking to throw. He's going for the bomb. It is touchdown. Kenny Duckett. What a catch by Duckett as he went high into the air to spear that one over Hollis Hall. He just grabbed that one away from Hall. And Wake Forest is on the board as Schofield takes them downfield and goes for the end zone and gets it. Now we have the attempt for the point after. It'll be Phil Denfield. Holding will be David Weber. The snap, the spot, the kick is up. The kick is good. There is time out on the field. The score here at the Valley is Clemson 14, Wake Forest 7. So Wake Forest is beginning to make a game out of this one with Gary Schofield and that nice 17-yard scoring strike to Kenny Duckett. The score, however, is still 14 to 7, and we'll pick up action later in this first quarter. The Clemson Tigers have third down and an unlucky 13 yards to go. The ball lies on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 35-yard line. Homer takes out, back to throw again, straight drop, fires over the middle, caught by Magwood. He's down inside the 20 at about the 16-yard line. Oh. What a throw by Homer Jordan threading the needle right through the arms of defender Ronnie Burgess, and Magwood just kept on pumping over the middle on a post and grabs it in for a first down at the 16. Magwood started, started waving his left arm the minute he broke open. For a moment, I thought Homer did not see him, but what a throw once he saw his intended receiver. Stock still flanked to the right. Magwood splits off left end. Again, they'll be in the eye. Homer Jordan... Now brings them up in a split backfield as McSwain comes to the left side. Homer in a straight drop. Here is the pass in the end zone for Stockstill. Overshoots Jeff Stockstill. Well, Jeff is still looking for that touchdown pass. He had one at Duke that Homer overshot him on. Last week, he made a wrong cut on one that he would have been wide open on. And this time, Homer just lifts it over his outstretched arm. So it is now second and 10 at the 16. Yeah, he and Gilliard are pretty much in the same boat. Gilliard has never had a touchdown pass since he's been here at Clemson. Tuttle goes wide right. Magwood comes left. I formation once more behind Homer Jordan with exactly a minute left in the first quarter. A 14-7 game. Tigers on top. Here's McSwain. 10-5 down to the three-yard line. Goes Chuck McSwain. That'll be a first down for the Tigers. And once more, it is first and goal Clemson as Henderson Threat and Ronnie Burgess finally bring Chuck McSwain down. 
Nothing fancy there, folks. Just your basic off-tackle play. Brendan Kreitz coming in. That means they'll work from a wing back now and get an extra blocking back in there. McSwain will remain at tailback. Kevin Mack will stay at fullback. Kreitz may be in motion. Kreitz, the wing to the left side as Homer moves up under center. Now he goes in motion from left to right. Pitch back. Here's McSwain. McSwain to the one, and I believe he has stopped just shy of the goal line, down at the one. Patapas and Landis were there defensively. 21 seconds left in the first quarter. 14-7, Tigers on top. Magwood comes in with a play. Kreit checks out. Is it psychological, or does the first quarter seem unduly long to you? Uh, it does, because we've had a lot of action, I guess. 21 yeah. points. All right, set to go. Two seconds. Will they get the playoff? They do not. They do not get the playoff. The first quarter has come to an end here at the Valley. With the score after one, Clemson 14, Wake Forest 7. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Very interesting first quarter. The Tigers absolutely no trouble moving the ball against Wake Forest. Wake Forest, with the exception of one possession, has been able to move the ball pretty well against Clemson in the air. Brendan Kreit will be a wing to the left side. Kevin Mack at fullback. McSwain the tailback. It's inside the one. It's second and goal. Kreit in motion left to right. Here's McSwain. Touchdown. Chuck McSwain over right guard goes in to score. Tigers on top now by a score of 20 to 7. And again, Bob Pauling will come on and attempt the extra point. Will look for his 28th in a row as a Clemson Tiger. Holding will be Peretti. 14.58. Just two seconds off the clock here in the second quarter when McSwain went over the top for the six. We are awaiting the snap. The spot by Peretti. Pauling's kick is up and good. So there is timeout on the field. The score... Clemson 21, Wake Forest 7. By now, the Clemson Tigers are really clawing their way onto the scoreboard. Following their last score to make it 21 to 7, the Demons Deacon drive was stalled at midfield. The Tigers now take over the ball, first and 10, on their own 14-yard line. A yard wide left, Tuttle comes to the right side, they'll be in the eye. Kevin Mack and Chuck McSwain behind Homer Jordan at quarterback. Jordan now takes out, pitch back to McSwain. Chuck coming to the right side, 20, out to the 25, 27-yard line before he is pulled down, and Ronnie Burgess was there defensively for Wake Forest, but a first down Tigers as McSwain takes it over right tackle to the 27-yard line. Oh, the two tailbacks running extremely well, Austin and McSwain. Austin with two touchdowns, McSwain with one. Well, keep an eye on that Wake defensive line. They're doing some shifting here. Magwood left, stock still right. Split backfield now with Kevin Mack and Chuck McSwain. Behind Homer Jordan, the quarterback of the Tigers. Jordan gives to McSwain. McSwain, hurdling tacklers, comes out to the 30 and is hit there by Steve Hammond, who is the middle linebacker in that Demon Deacon defense. 12 minutes remaining, second quarter, 21-7. Clemson on top in this game. But boy, I'll tell you, you cannot relax one second <laughs> when Wake Forest gets a hold of the football. Oh, they scare the daylights out of you. Tuttle flanked left. Gilliard splits off right end. I formation again behind Jordan at quarterback as Homer takes out. Again, oh, gives to McSwain and Chuck bursts over left tackle. He's a little irritated at himself. He was tripped by the ankle as he hit the line of scrimmage and fell down at the 34 Randall Singleton got a hand on McSwain's ankle to trip him up. It's third down and three Tigers. What he was upset about, he once he got past the initial point of contact, he looked around, there was nobody there, and he was on the ground. Tuttle wide left. Magwood split from right end. Ball at the 34-yard line of the Tigers, third and three. Jordan sets them in the eye. Homer takes out. He's keeping. Turns upfield. Homer has a first down as he moves it out to the 38-yard line before he is hit by Henderson Threat, the right cornerback of the Demon Deacons. It'll be a first down Tigers at the 38-yard line. Oh, Homer Jordan with a big, big run. Good crowd today, in excess of 62,000. A lot of football left to play today. Big, big ACC game. Stock still wide left. 
Gilliard splits right. McSwain to the right, Mack to the left in the split backfield behind Homer Jordan, the quarterback. Jordan now up under center, barking those signals out, takes out, drops the throw, looking down the right side, firing. It is completed there to McSwain coming out of the backfield. Protapas brings McSwain down, but not before he gets out to the 48, and he'll be close to another first down here. That should be very, very near. I think they'll bring the yeah. chain sticks in and take a look at this one. This is something uh, the Tigers didn't do early in the year, Jim. They just line up and play power football at people. But now more and more we're seeing the tailback swing out of the backfield and just a nice little pass that Jordan can get to him. It's a very, very good offensive weapon. That's McSwain's second reception on the year. They'll stretch out the chains now immediately in front of us, and it's a first down for the Tigers. How many on the afternoon, Scott? Oh, my goodness, I'll have to go back and count here. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half of play. 21 to 7, Tigers on top in this game. Tuttle again going wide to the left side as Gilliard splits off right end. They'll that's, work a split backfield. That's 11 for the Tigers and about 10 for Wake Forest. All right, Jordan moves up under center again. We await the snap here now. Homer takes out. This time it is Kevin Mack. Mack with running room. He's across the 45. He's into the 40, the 39-yard line. Kevin Mack bumping over right guard, carrying in to the 39-yard line for a first down. Henderson Threat and Steve Hammond came over to get him. I've been waiting all afternoon on the fullback to carry. They've been lining up in that little split backfield where they counter the fullback. Well, they used it so well against North Carolina State last week. Magwood left, Tuttle right. High formation again behind Homer Jordan, the quarterback. Jordan now takes out, pitch back to McSwain. Chuck almost slipped, fights his way forward to about the 36, however, before Mike Protapas is there to make the defensive play for the Deacons. They'll mark it at the 37-yard line. So the pickup is two. It'll be second down and eight. 9.38 remaining in the first half. 21-7 Tigers. Cliff Austin has just checked in now at tailback. Stock still goes wide left. Gilliard will slot on the left side. They'll work with Bubba Diggs as a tight end to the right. I formation. Jordan now again up under center as Austin shifts into a split backfield. Jordan rolling to his left, going to run. Jordan at the 30, all the way down to the 27-yard line where he is finally pulled down, but that'll be another first down for the Tigers. David Cox came up. Good read by Homer. He was looking to throw deep, but saw the room to run and scampered. I know you were watching the ball, watching Jordan, uh, but when uh, Austin shifted, Jim, he had a great block out on the corner that allowed Homer to, to get back to the inside. The super block. Gilliard goes to the left. Tuttle will flank to the right side. I formation at the 27-yard line of the Demon Deacons. In motion is Tuttle from right to left as Homer Jordan now takes out. Drops straight back to throw. There's Tuttle out in the wide left side. Gets around the tackler and fights his way inside the 20 to the 19-yard line before Ronnie Burgess reaches him over there and pulls him down. This is the type of offense the Tigers are looking to run against the Deacons to keep the hand, uh, keep the ball out of Schofield's hands. They want to control it. That was the big key coming into today's game. If they could keep the ball on the ground, pass only when necessary, and when the pass is complete, stay in bounds just to run that clock down. McSwain is back in. He'll be in the tailback in the eye. Magwood comes wide to the right side. Now in motion is Stockstill from left to right. Jordan takes out, gives to McSwain. Chuck fights his way inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line before he is finally caught and dropped down. That'll be another first down, Tigers, as McSwain battled his way through the arms of would-be tacklers and carries to the 10 where Kent Simon hauled him down. Oh, what a good-looking drive this is. Started at their own 14, six first downs now, and they've covered a lot of real estate in the last uh, couple of minutes. They have marked it just inside the 10, so it's first and goal. We'll call it the nine. As Gilliard goes left, Stock still comes right. Homer Jordan has Austin back in now, along with Kevin Mack, the fullback. They work from a split backfield. Homer up under center, takes out, gives it off to Kevin Mack. He's at the five. Mack, touchdown! At the five-yard line, Steve Hammond, the middle linebacker, grabbed a hold of Kevin Mack. But Kevin said, bye-bye, see you later, stepped out of his grasp, and went in from 
the nine yard line. The Tigers move on top by a score of 27 to seven and Bob Pauling will look for number 29 in a row. You know, this ready will hold. This thing keeps going. Pauling may go after Armstrong's record of consecutive extra points today. The snap for Reddy's spot. The kick is up. The kick is good. That's 29 in a row by Bob Pauling. Timeout on the field. The score, Tigers 28, the Demon Deacon 7. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. The score is now Clemson 28 and the Wake Forest Demon Deacon 7. The Tigers were beginning to pull away in what would prove to be a historic second quarter of action. We'll pick up again now. Jim Phillips and Scott Johnson at the microphones. The Tigers with the ball, first and 10 on their own 41. 28 to 7, Tigers on top. Gilliard goes left. Tuttle, a flanker to the right side. Split backfield behind Homer Jordan at quarterback. In motion, Tuttle from right to left. Jordan now takes out, rolling to his left. He's looking to throw. Homer firing downfield. All alone is Tuttle. He's got it, and he is down inside the 30 to the 24-yard line. Malcolm Harrison was over to cover. A beautifully thrown football again by Homer Jordan. And Tuttle, who was backpedaling, just grabbed it into his stomach and fell back into the 24-yard line. That ball was thrown so softly, it just appeared to float down to P.T. Magwood goes out to the left side. Stockstill will come right. They'll work from a split backfield behind Homer Jordan. The ball in at the 24-yard line of the Demon Deacons. Homer Jordan at the controls. Takes out. Gives it off to McCall. McCall outside at the 20, the 10. Down to about the 7-yard line goes Jeff McCall. John Snyder, the right cornerback, finally bringing him down. But Jeff McCall gets the call and goes outside. The big fullback was rumbling. Oh, ho. And these fans have had a lot to cheer about this afternoon. A lot of offense by both teams, and uh, to their delight, most of it belongs to Clemson. It's a 28 to seven game, still six and a half to go in the first half. Tuttle wide to the right side, as Homer has them in a split backfield once again. Ball is at the seven yard line, first and goal Tigers. 625 remaining in the half. Here's Homer throwing for Tuttle, incomplete in the end zone. The ball was thrown a little high, Homer was under a little duress when he delivered. Henderson Threat was back covering for the Demon Deacons. Well, I'll tell you what, Homer unlimbered the arm and sent a rifle shot down there that time for Perry, and he couldn't quite get to it. High, hard fastball. One of those Tommy John specials. Ooh. Stock still to the left. Magwood comes right. High formation once again. Behind Jordan, second down a goal at the seven-yard line of the Deacons. Homer Jordan up under center now, set to go. Takes out, pitch back. This is Austin sweeping left, turns upfield, gonna get back to the line of scrimmage and then be bounced out of bounds by Mike Hodgson. So now the Tigers will be faced with a third and goal at the seven yard line of the Deeks. Remember, they have scored each possession they have had this afternoon. Jim, that may have been a purpose play. The pitch sweep to the left, the short side of the field, they have uh, the wide side of the field to the right to work with. Let's see if Homer does decide to do something on the right side of the field this time. Tuttle goes to the left. Gilliard comes to the right. Split backfield as Tuttle is in motion left to right. Homer takes out, rolling right. Now going to run with it. He's at the five. Touchdown, Homer Jordan. Oh, did it open up so beautifully on the right side. You called it. They've been going left to the short side of the field. It was wide open all the way as they caught them cheating a little bit on defense that time. And Homer just went untouched into the end zone from seven yards out. It's now 34 to seven. And Pauling will try to go for 30 in a row as an extra point kicker. You know, I was joking when I thought he may have a shot at the record today, but it's not a joke anymore. He'll be five away. Here's his kick. Good. Score with 6.07 left in the half. Clemson 35, Wake Forest 7. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Igwe Buike hits it high and deep again. Backed up is Owens. Has it four yards into the end zone. He'll touch it down. It'll come out to the 20, and that's where the Deacons will take over first and 10. 
offensive fireworks here this afternoon as the Tigers have exploded for 35 points here in the first half. The Deacons have moved the ball quite well through the air. Out comes Wake Forest wide to the right side. They send Greg to the left comes Ryan and Ruffner will be a slot to the left side. They'll have one running back behind as Schofield drops the throw has time over the middle. He goes Denfield a fumble and I believe Wake Forest gets it. No wait a minute. I believe maybe the Tigers have it here. Let's see. Tigers have the football. Jeff Davis came up with it. Danny Triplett knocked it out of the hands of Denfield who had made the reception and Clemson has the football again at the 24 yard line of the Deacons. Whew. Al Groh has to be shaking his head over there wondering what the heck else can go wrong. Tuttle goes wide to the left side. Gilliard comes right split backfield behind Homer Jordan at quarterback. Homer now has them at the 24 yard line of the Deacons. Up under center he is, takes out, drops the throw, looking for Tuttle, fires, touchdown! No, he dropped the football. Perry Tuttle will not see a more delicious sight than that was. Homer threw one beautifully over the defender, and Perry dropped the ball. Swider was beaten completely. <laughs> oh, it was nicely thrown, too. It just laid in there very, very well. Boston College, three, Pittsburgh, nothing, first quarter. Well, it's early, but B.C. usually gives Pittsburgh a pretty good battle. All right, stock still to the left. Gilliard comes right. Split backfield again behind Homer Jordan at quarterback. Jordan now takes out. This time is riding it off to Jeff McCall at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! Well, I told Sack Bagley a week ago when Jeff McCall rambled up the middle for a touchdown. That's the way fullbacks are supposed to run. That time he sprinted outside and then carried in. And guess who the first guy down there to greet him was? Tailback Cliff Austin. What a run. 24 yards for Jeff McCall. Tigers lead at 41 to 7. You're right. Pauling may go for the record today. I tell you what, the Tiger may go for a record today doing push-ups down there. Peretti will hold. The snap, the spot, Pauling's kick is good. Pauling with 31 in a row. Timeout on the field. The score, Tigers 42, Wake Forest 7. Big weekday's kick, high, end over end. Greg, nine yards into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20 once again. Donald is kicking into a brisk breeze and still belting the devil out of the football. That was eight yards deep into the end zone. McCall, oh, the uh, last touchdown drive, failed to mention to you, two plays, 24 yards, after Homer threw the intercept, uh, the incompletion, excuse me, to Tuttle. Uh, of course, McCall rambled 24 yards for a touchdown. Ryan left, Greg goes to the right side, back to throw, Schofield, rush on him, he's rolling out to his right, firing, it is caught. And up around the 27-yard line is Tom Gregg, who was hauled down at that point. Jeff Suttle was there. Johnny Rembert was also there for the Tigers. So mark it at the 28-yard line, a pickup of eight. It'll be second down and two for the Demon Deacons. Every Clemson possession has resulted in a score. That's what, seven possessions, seven touchdowns? Six. Six, six. Yeah, I can't even count. Six, that's right. Here's the ride straight ahead this time. They give to their tailback, Dwayne Owens, and he cracks for a first down out over the 30 as he gets out to the 33-yard line. So a first down for the Deacons. Dan Benish was there defensively along with William Devane. We still have five minutes left in the first half, and there are 49 points on the scoreboard. <laughs> All right, Schofield brings them out. Greg is wide left. Ryan goes to the right side, and they have Mullen as a slot left in motion. He fires over the middle, intercepted. Terry Kennard, that's number six on the year for Kennard as he has hauled down at the 35-yard line. Terry Kennard has picked off his sixth interception of the year. That is, what, 20 on the year for the Tigers now? And they have it at the 35-yard line, and Mike Gaskew is coming in at quarterback for the Tigers. Well, the relief pitcher comes in. Gaskew, who has not played that much this year, 
gets a chance to show what he can do. 442 remains in the half. Gilliard goes left. Tuttle comes to the right side. Kevin Mack, Chuck McSwain are the split backfield behind Mike Gaskew at quarterback. Gaskew now takes out, gives it off to McSwain. Chuck cuts in over right tackle, fights his way into the 31-yard line and is hit down there by Todd Landle, who is the defensive end on the right side for the Demon Deacons. So a pickup of four. It'll be second down and six now for the Tigers as Kendall Alley checks in. Jeff McCall is back in at fullback. And Chuck McSwain remains as the tailback. Tuttle will come to the right side. Alley goes left. Gaskew, the quarterback, as they work from a split backfield. Mike now moves up under center. Clock down to 4 of 3 remaining in the half. Rolling to his right, firing. It is caught by Tuttle and out of bounds goes Perry at the 27-yard line. Malcolm Harrison covering there. Tuttle was just a little close to the sideline, could not get his nose turned upfield. That was a good pass for Gaskew. He comes in, completes his first pass. Big confidence builder for him. He wants to get his feet on the ground. As we mentioned, he's not played that much this year. Stock still left. Alley comes to the right side. Jeff McCall and Chuck McSwain, the running backs. This time it is McCall. He's got the first down and more at the 20. Down to the 16-yard line goes Jeff McCall. Has that young man put on those playing shoes the last couple of weeks? <laughs> Both fullbacks have. Both are playing extremely well. It's at the 16, first and 10 Tigers. Incidentally, Kevin Mack went off a few plays ago limping slightly. He doesn't appear to be very seriously injured, but he did get a, a bruise or something on his leg. Kendall Alley goes left. Tuttle is flanked to the right side. Eye formation this time behind Gaskew at quarterback. Mike has them in at the 16-yard line of the Demon Deacons. The ride is off to Chuck McSwain. 10-5, touchdown! <laughs> Chuck McSwain merely hit the line of scrimmage behind good Chris blocking that time, and the rest was all his as he hit the open field. He just took off and sprints in from 16 yards out, and we have a 48-7 to football game as Pauling now will try to make it 32 in a row as a Tiger. Peretti again to hold as we await the snap. Here's the spot. Pauling's kick is up. His kick is good. 32 in the row for Bob Pauling. He's within three of tying the record. Timeout on the field. The score. Tigers 49. Wake Forest 7. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Tom Gregg, Dwayne Owens. Back deep. It's a low kick. A flat one. It's going to be picked up by uh, Owens. Fumbles it, picks it back up at the 20. Now he's got some running room, comes out over the 30, 40, and finally knocked down at the 44-yard line. That little fumble he had out there was almost enough to get all of the coverage outside and too far down. Many, Billy Davis made the tackle. Yeah, how many times do you see a mistake on a kick return like that turn into big, big yardage? Uh, what are we looking at here? 43-yard line of the Deacons, first and 10. Baumgartner goes right, Duckett comes left. They'll have an eye formation behind Schofield, the quarterback. Pitch back to his tailback, that's Owens, trying to come left and nowhere to go as he's hammered down at the 43-yard line. David Weber, incidentally, is in a quarterback now for the Deacons. Danny Triplett made that tackle. David Weber has checked in, replacing Gary Schofield at quarterback. Two minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Wide to the right side, they send Duckett. They'll bring Bumgardner to the left. They'll work from an eye formation again behind Weber. Weber with a pitch back again to his tailback. Cunningham this time sweeps outside, gets up over the 45-50 and into the 45 of the Tigers. That'll be a Deacon first down. So tailback Carlos Cunningham found some running room. That is their first rushing first down in the afternoon with 2.33 left to go in the first half. Got that second quarter output of 28 points, tied a Clemson all-time record for points in the second quarter. We're still researching the record for uh, points in one half. All right, Weber rides it off to his tailback. Again, that's Cunningham. He goes straight ahead, bulls his way into about the 41-yard line and is hit there as up defensively for the Tigers once again. Well, I missed who made the tackle over there for the Tigers that time. 
So it is spotted at the 42-yard line where it is second down, seven yards to go now. Baumgartner goes to the right, Duckett comes left. They'll work with one back behind and a wing to the right side. Weber, the quarterback now, takes out, drops the throw. Weber looking, firing, and wide open was Duckett, and he is hammered down at the 20-yard line. That'll be another first down, Deacons, as Anthony Rose really hit him, but it didn't bother Kenny Duckett, who has a great pair of hands, and it's a first down, Deacons, at the 20. What a great throw, too. Weber just loaded up, threw the ball as hard as he could, and Duckett caught it, slanting over the middle. Just a nice, nice reception. Good pass play. Wide to the right side goes Ryan. Greg comes left. They'll work a slot on the right side as Weber at quarterback now has one back behind. Appeals to the referee on the crowd noise. So it will be time out. Well, the crowd getting up, getting a little uh, crazy for their defense. And, of course, that new NCAA crowd noise crowd rule comes into effect here. Just looking there, uh, that was a 35-point quarter, not a 28-point yes, quarter. Yes, the, the Tigers scored first play of the second quarter. That's General right. Touchdown you're I about. pushed that one into the first quarter, so that's a new record for second quarter scoring. Wide receivers to the right and left. In motion from right to left now, they bring Ruffner back to throw Weber over the middle. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Denfield, the tight end. Tigers were coming hard on a blitz that time. Triplett had good coverage on the receiver, Denfield, and it goes incomplete, so it'll be second down and 10. We have a relief quarterback in, Weber, who has come in for uh, starting quarterback Schofield. I don't think Schofield's in, injured or anything, Jim. No. no. Well, David Weber's the senior, Scott. He began the season as the starter, and Schofield came on to earn the job, so I think they're just going to try and get a little shake-up here. Ryan to the near side. Duckett goes wide right. Now they have Denfield lining up a tight end right and a wing left. That's Ruffner as Weber takes out, drops the throw, has time. He's going for the end zone for Duckett. It is incomplete down at the goal line. Over there covering Andy Hedden and Hollis Hall for the Tigers. So now it will be fourth down for the Deacons. The football at the 15-yard line of the Tigers. Andy, at a defensive end, has defensive back speed. He's a former, much-recruited quarterback out of the state of North Carolina. And boy, when he gets back in that secondary, man on. And three points certainly will not help them at this juncture. Fourth, and they need a long four. Ryan goes wide right. Duckett is in a slot to the right side. They'll go I formation as Weber at quarterback pitches back to his tailback Cunningham. He's got the first down and more at the 10. Down at the 5 and fights his way all the way down to about the one-yard line. Maybe the last thing in the world the Tiger defense was looking for that time was a run from Wake Forest. And Terry Kennard and Jeff Davis both were bowled over by Carlos Cunningham, who was coming with a full head of steam. You know what we almost saw there, too? Quarterback David Weber brings them up. Now they work with a power eye formation strong to the left. Now they switch into a double tight end formation with a wing to the left side, and Weber rides it off again to Cunningham. Touchdown! Carlos Cunningham bowls in from a yard out. And so Wake Forest has scored with 39 seconds remaining in the first half of play here this afternoon as Weber comes off the bench to replace Schofield and leads the Demon Deacons in a scoring drive as we'll have now Denfield attempting to add the extra point. We await the snap and the spot. Denfield's kick is up. His kick is good. So there's timeout on the field with 39 seconds remaining in the first half of play. The score here at the Valley, Clemson 49, Wake Forest 14. And so with 39 seconds left in the first half, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons put their second touchdown on the board to close out the scoring. And with the score, Clemson 49 and Wake Forest 14, the first half came to an end. That was certainly good news to the Demon Deacons. Clemson had set several school records in that second quarter, in addition to pulling away with a 35-point lead. I'll be back to sum up that first half of action in just a moment. The premier event of Best of USA 1982 is obviously not a defensive struggle. At halftime, the score is 49-14 to for the Tigers of Clemson. Several school records were well on their way to being shattered, and in fact, two had already been set. The Tigers' 35 points set the single quarter record for the most points scored, and the total for both teams, 42, also set a record. In the first half, Clemson had run up an amazing 363 yards on offense, 253 of those on the ground. It was an extraordinary half for the Tiger running backs. 
The fans at Memorial Stadium were going to be further surprised in the second half. Yet certainly a few had in mind the Wake Forest-Clemson game of the preceding year in 1980. In that game, the Tigers had a comfortable lead going into the fourth quarter, and then something happened. The Demon Deacons of Wake Forest put an offense together. They ripped off 26 points to cut that margin to two. Well, this year is going to be a little bit different, as we'll soon see. Let's return again to Memorial Stadium. It's October 1981, as the second half gets underway on USA. Denfield's high end over end kick will be picked off by Perry Tuttle at the threes up to the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20. Out to the 25 comes Tuttle and down he goes at the 25 yard line as downfield for the Demon Deacons was Carlos Cunningham to make the tackle. Second half just underway here at the Valley. Clemson 49, Wake Forest 14 as we're back to the football action. Well, those were some pretty impressive statistics you rattled off there a moment ago. 363 yards total offense, 253 on the ground. Perry Tuttle wide to the right side. Gilliard will be a slot to the right. Homer Jordan has returned to quarterback. Jeff McCall and Cliff Austin are in the eye. This time it is Homer on a deep fly pattern for Tuttle. He's out there. He's got it at the 30. Tuttle at the 20, Bye -bye. 15, 10, touchdown. <laughs> what a way to open up the second half. I was talking with Lawson Holland, who is the receiver coach, just five minutes ago, Scott. He said Perry's got a hot hand today, but he dropped a hot potato in the end zone, and we're going to give him a chance early in the second half to see if he can latch on to one. Well, Homer, off the fake run play, just unloaded an 80 yard or a 75 yard touchdown bomb to Perry Tuttle. Lockie Brown is kicking the extra point and it is no good. Clemson 55, Wake Forest 14. We move to action later in the third quarter. That punt by Newsom was 41 yards. Mike Gaskew is back in a quarterback now. Ball at the 40 yard line. Wide to the right comes Tuttle. Gilliard goes out left. Pitch back. Here is a halfback pass coming. Cliff Austin looking for Tuttle and he can't make the grab but it's going to be intercepted by three. Three rolling to his right comes upfield over the 25 30 35 and out to the 40 yard line before he is knocked down. So Cliff Austin on the halfback pass throw has it intercepted. Cliff's percentage will fall off won't it. Well, there's nothing like fun at the old ball yard. I don't know where they pull that one out. We haven't seen it in a couple of years. Halfback option pass. All right the ball at the 40 yard line Wake Forest in possession. Wide to the left side, they bring Baumgartner. Now they slot on the left side with Greg, and they wing on the left side. Here is the ride straight off, and uh, that is Cunningham, the tailback, coming up over the 45 to the 47-yard line, where he is knocked down. Second down, 40 for the Deacons. At their own 45-yard line, they'll send Ryan wide to the right side. They'll work from a double wing. Schofield now sends Greg in motion from left to right. Takes out, drops the throw, fires over the middle. It's complete. And again, it's Denfield, his tight end, into Tiger territory at the 48-yard line, where he is hauled down by Terry Kennard. So mark it at the 48 of the Tigers, where it is first and 10 for the Demon Deacons. 12-14 remaining in the third quarter of play here at the Valley this afternoon. Bumgardner comes left. Greg goes wide to the right side. They'll slot on the right side with Denfield. Schofield has a split backfield behind him. In motion is Denfield from right to left. Back to throw. Schofield under pressure. Flips out in the right flat for Cockerman. He comes up over the 45 and down to the 40-yard line before he is knocked down. And Jeff Suttle was there defensively along with Vandell Errington of the Tigers. Now Childers is getting back in for Clemson. And Suttle is coming out of there. Devane back in. Perry out defensively for Clemson. Deacons with the football as Greg comes wide to the left side. Denfield slots left and Bumgardner goes wide right. Schofield back to throw. Has time. Fires over the middle. Complete again to Denfield. Down at the 35-yard line. And that'll be another first down for the Deacons as Danny Triplett made the tackle. And all day long, Schofield has been able to go to Mr. Denfield over the middle. They've marked it at the 34. All he's doing, Jim, is splitting... Uh triplet and uh, Jeff Davis he's just falling into that little seam it's been there all afternoon they've used it Greg left slot left 
That's Denfield. He's in motion left to right. Schofield again back to throw. He's going to go deep this time, and he's got Denfield again, and he's wide open down inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Finally hauled down there by Jeff Suttle and Terry Kennard along with Tim Childers. But another first down, I believe it should be enough. Yes, another first down for the Deacons as Schofield is moving them through the air once again. Mike Mullen gets in now as Denfield checks out. Denfield has caught six in the afternoon. Greg Wright, Bumgardner comes left. They'll be in an eye formation. Schofield pitch back to his tailback Owens. Sweeping wide right. Has running room. He's down to the 15-yard line and hit there. Up to grab him was Terry Kennard. So Wake Forest never giving an inch in this football game. Although they trail 55-14, to 14, the Deacons are on the move. Devane out, Terry back in at middle guard. Again, they send Greg wide to the right with Ryan to the left side. High formation now behind Schofield. Second down on a couple. They ride it off to their fullback, Cockerman. He gets the first down as he's inside the 10 to the 9 before William Perry can bring him down at that point. So the Deacons threatening to score here again now in the third quarter of play. The Tigers that time, and uh, because of the offensive set Wake Forest lined up in, Andy Hedden was a good 10, 15 yards off the line of scrimmage, and they just broke it past the four uh, front. And they're doing that extremely well right now. Ryan goes right, Greg comes left. The fans want the defense to hold. Here comes the blitz. Schofield gets it off, however, and it is incomplete in the end zone, intended for Tom Gregg. There to cover for the Tigers was Rod McSwain. So that one goes incomplete. It will come back now to the nine yard line where it is second down and goal for the Deacons. So Wake Forest in possession of the football deep in Tiger territory at the nine yard line. High formation again. They send Duckett in motion. The pitch back is to Owen, sweeps the right side, and he has bounced out of bounds in the vicinity of the five-yard line. All right, Deacons come out. It's third down and goal. The ball at the Tiger five-yard line. Greg is wide to the left side. Quarterback Schofield back to throw, looking into the end zone, firing incomplete for Ryan. Overshoots his man, who was on a straight fly, and Andy Hedden was back covering for the Tigers on that play along with Vandell Arrington. So now it'll be fourth down for the Deeks. Looks like they're going for three here, Jim. Just try to come out of this with something. 55 to 14. Denfield with Weber to hold. It will be a 22-yard effort from the right hash mark. The kick is up. The kick is good. So with 9.32 remaining in the third quarter, there's five out on the field with the score. Tigers 55, Wake Forest 17. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. The official score in this game has certainly been a busy man. It's now Clemson 55 and Wake Forest 17. It was a day to dump on the Demon Deacons, and still there are nine and a half minutes left in the third quarter. This Clemson team was providing a clear demonstration of why they deserved a number one ranking. Incidentally, six members of this 81 squad would go on to be drafted by NFL teams, and four more would sign as free agents. But let's pick up the action again. It's third quarter, first and ten, with the ball on the Clemson Tigers' 30-yard line. Listen to these first down averages per carry. Austin, 6.5. McCall, 13 yards. McSwain, 5.7. Mack, 11. Uh, Jordan, 6.5 a carry. Tuttle goes wide to the left side. Gilliard splits off right end. Split backfield now behind Gaskew at quarterback. Mike takes out. Gives it off to McCall. Jeff McCall out over the 35. There's a flag down on the play. As he gets out to about the 37 where Randall Singleton comes over to make the tackle. They have spotted it up at the 38, but a flag went down, and it could be a holding call against the Tigers here. Sure appears. Yep. That's what it is. Uh, Clemson, Jim, has three running backs if the Tigers elect to keep the ball on the ground pretty much in the second half. They got three guys who could go over 100 yards today. Austin McCall and, of course, McSwain. McSwain had 75 at the half. McCall 65 and Austin with 61. You had best pull out the record books because it's been a while since Clemson had three go over 101 day. Right. It's back now to the 22 yard line as the Tigers were detected holding on the play. Stockstill is going wide to the left side. It'll be first down and 20 for the Tigers. 
Magwood will be a slot left. They'll work from an eye formation. Gaskew at quarterback, setting them down. Mike now. Long count, takes out, pitch back. Here's Austin, sweeping left. Austin at the 25, up over the 30, and out to the 36-yard line goes Cliff Austin before he is pulled down. Okay, Jim, uh, Jeff has done some research here. The South Carolina game in 1978, Sims and Fuller each had 100 yards. You want to guess who the other person was? 78, probably uh, the rubber duck, wasn't it? Right, Lester Brown. So that was 78, three years ago. Okay, well, it's been a while, like I say. Okay, <laughs> Tuttle goes wide to the left side. Magwood splits out right. It's second down and four. The ride is off this time to the tailback. McSwain gets out near the 40-yard line, but is hammered down at that point. Hammond, along with Todd Landis, were there for the Demon Deacons defensively. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remaining here in this third quarter of play. The ball at the 40. The Tigers need a yard. It's third and one. Worst checks in now. Magwood comes out. 55 to 17. Clemson on top in this game. Tuttle wide to the right side as Gaskew again leads them to the line of scrimmage, sets them down in the eye formation. Mike takes out, rides it off to Jeff McCall. He's got the first down and more as he booms out to the 45-yard line. Andy C. and Ronnie Burgess were there defensively for the Deacons. Cliff Austin getting back in now after McSwain got the first down yardage. Kendall Alley is also checking in as a wide receiver. He'll bring a play with him. I tell you what, if they wanted to really unload one and try to get six more, that Wake Forest defense is drawn in so tightly. They were last time. The backers and defensive backs were all in tight. Now they loosen up just a bit. Alley goes left. Tuttle comes right. Rolling to his right to throw his gas cue, firing. That's Bubba Diggs on a delay. He's into the 45-yard line of Wake Forest before he is chopped down. And it was Donald Johnson, the left cornerback, who made the grab on, oh, no, that's Kendall Alley, or is it Diggs? No, it's Diggs. Saw Kendall leaving the area, but it was uh, Diggs who made the grab. So mark it at the 45-yard line of the Deacons. Another first down for the Tigers, first and 10. Well, they're controlling the football now, which is the best defense against Schofield and company. Keep it out of their hands. Just over six minutes to go, third quarter. Again, they are down. As Gaskew moves up under center, they're in the eye formation. Pitch back. This time it's Austin. Cliff over right tackle. 35, 30, and finally out of bounds. In at the 29-yard line where Ronnie Burgess drags him down. Cliff Austin breaking over right tackle, found some running room, and carries to the 29-yard line of the Deacons, where it is another first down Tigers. Six minutes exactly, showing on the scoreboard clock here in the third quarter. Out they come, Magwood goes left, stock still will split to the right side. High formation again behind Gaskew, rides it off to Jeff McCall. He gets into about the 23 or 4 yard line where he is hit. And up defensively was Mike Ferrero for the Deacons. They'll spot the football at the 25-yard line, I believe. Yes, right on the 25 where his knee touched down. Okay, um, Austin now has unofficially, and we use this unofficially, we've done some quick figuring, 93 yards in the afternoon. Magwood splits left. Tuttle comes out flank to the right side. High formation again behind Gaskew at quarterback at the 25-yard line of the Deacons. Second down and six. Gaskew back to throw, looking, firing for Tuttle, touchdown! A 25-yard strike, and what a well-thrown ball that time by Gaskew as he just laid it up and over, and Tuttle ran under it, and the Tigers lead it 61-17. to What was that? 20... 25 yards. 25 yards. Uh, so that puts Tuttle at 161 yards receiving today. And we're going to get Lockie Brown trying to get that first extra point as a Tiger. Well, Come on, Lockie, let's do it. Let's get it right here. We're ready to hold. Brown is a conventional straight-on kicker. Here's the snap, the spot. Lockie's kick is up. His kick is good. Lockie Brown, a senior Tiger, splits the uprights. There's timeout on the field with the score. Tigers 62, Wake Forest 17. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment.
Wide to the right side goes Tom Gregg. They'll bring Bumgardner to the left. They'll work for the split backfield as Schofield is back to throw on second down. Rush on him. Fires over the middle. Going to be picked off. Billy Davis. Davis in at the 30. Davis sprinting outside is going to be knocked down at the 29-yard line. Bumgardner was the intended receiver, and Bumgardner made the tackle on Billy Davis, who picks off his second on the year, and that's 21 interceptions by the Tigers' secondary this season. Well, let's see who the quarterback's going to be. Going to be Anthony Peretti. Yes. Anthony Peretti, a freshman out of Florida, comes on at quarterback. Brendan Kreit will be in. We probably will have some wholesale substitutions here pretty soon. Kreitz in. He's running at fullback. Haven't picked up the tailback as of yet. All right, the give is to Kreitz. Look at him go. He's at the 15 and down to the 12-yard line. Brendan Kreitz hit by Andy C., but not before he gets to the 12-yard line. So it's a first down for the Tigers on an 18-yard gallop by Brendan Kreitz. Still 440 remaining here in this third quarter of play. I don't know what everybody's looking at up here with their field glasses. It's above us. The upper deck extends out here. All right. Split backfield. Anthony Peretti takes out. Rides it off this time to McSwain. Sweeping wide to the right at the 10. The 5. Touchdown. Chuck McSwain in for the score. Tigers put six more on the board. Henderson Threat was trying to get to him over there and, in fact, hit him way late in the end zone. Did it draw a flag? I can't see for that crowd down there. It did draw a flag. So the penalty will come on the ensuing kickoff. And it looks like Rocky's going to get a chance to add another one up there. Well, his name's already in the record book. Everybody who scores points gets in the record book. So he's in there now. <laughs> he's going to try to move up another notch. For the second point of his career here at Clemson. Well, I'll tell you. Must have been an they airplane. Put in, they put in Peretti. They put in Brendan Kreit to run with him. And what's he do? He runs it down to the 12. And McSwain goes in for the touchdown. Lockie's kick is up. And good. Lockie Brown has a two-point day. Time out of the Valley. The score, Tigers 69, Wake Forest 17. Rocky Brown to kick off for the Tigers. Boy, I'll tell you what, this young man right here, I guarantee you there's no one happier at this stadium today than is this senior for the Tigers. That he boots it, of course, uh, from the 40 of Wake Forest because of the penalty on the flag in the end zone on the personal foul and kicks it into the end zone where Owens touches it down, it comes out to the 20 now, where it'll be first and 10 for Wake Forest. Well, let's check some of these names out there. Um, Arrington's in at one corner. Uh, I got to get out the depth chart now. Uh, my board does not nearly go deep enough. Uh, Watson's in at uh, a cornerback for the Tigers. They had a lot of new changes out there. All right, here they go. Weber back in a quarterback, dropping straight back to throw. Flips one out for Owens coming out of the backfield. He gets out to the 25 and is hit down at the 25-yard line. And over defensively is Roy Brown to make the tackle. Over there helping him was Randy Cheek. So the ball is up at the 25, but there is a flag back around the 20 and a holding, Jim, a holding call here against the Demon Deacon. So... That's going to be costly to them. Boy, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? Back to the 10-yard line on the half the distance penalty. Al Grove will be very, very happy to leave town this time. It's a long afternoon for his young men. Well, the Tiger offense just exploded here this afternoon. They came out so determined to play football, Scott, right off the top. There was no question. Ryan is wide to the left side, and Greg goes right. Pitch back to Owen, sweeping wide to the right, comes up over the 20 and is knocked down at about the 24-yard line. So Dwayne Owens taking off around right end that time, getting it out to the 24-yard line, where it'll now be second down and six for the Deacons. Ray Brown was up defensively for the Tigers, as was Randy Learn. You'll hear some new names here now because everybody's getting a chance to play for the Tigers here this afternoon. Greg comes wide to the left. They'll have Denfield as a slot left. Baumgartner goes right. David Weber 
Sends Denfield in motion, back to throw, looking for Denfield over the middle, and he makes the grab again, just shy of the 30-yard line. And over defensively was Johnny Rembert, who actually tackled the ball. He reached in and got a hold of the ball, but uh, Denfield's a big, strong young guy, and he hung on, and he pulled ball and Denfield down. Uh, Rembert is another good one. He'll be back. Very, very good linebacker. At the 29-yard line, it's third down and a yard for the Deacons. Wide left now comes Greg. They'll line up with Denfield tight on the right side and Bumgardner tight on the left side. They ride it off to Owens, and he gets the first down as he's out over the 30 to the 34-yard line. Clock down to 2.49 remaining here in the third quarter, 69-17. to 17. The Tigers on top in this game. Jim Scott, a defensive tackle. Picking out names, Randy Cheeks into the linebacker. Also in is uh, Roy Brown. Out they come. Now Weber sets them down. Back to throw again. Over the middle he goes for Denfield once more. Out at the 40 and down he goes there. Randy Cheeks in on that tackle. Johnny Rembert. Well, Jim, we had talked about the Tigers setting a new record today. Well, the Tiger has set a new record for push-ups. We've just been provided this by the sports information people. 382 push-ups this afternoon. Is that all? 382. Heck, Johnny Weissmuller used to do those that many every morning when he got out of bed. Not with that suit on. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> Here is uh, Weber looking to throw. Hits a little flare pass out on the right side. That's oh. to uh, Ruffner. And he is immediately caught over there by Roy Brown, who brings him down. Georgia Tech's leading Duke 24-21 at the half. LSU 7, Mississippi 3 in the first quarter. Notre Dame 28, Navy nothing at the half. South Carolina and NC State still battling. They're in the third or fourth quarter now. It's 12 to 6, the Wolfpack on top. Baumgartner comes wide to the left side. Weber has them, third down and six. Rides it off to his tailback. That's Owens. And Owens out across the 40 to about the 43, where he is knocked down. He didn't make it, I don't think, Jim. Uh, check that. I beg your pardon. There's a, a change here. I didn't, they had it up above. They scratched out the six. South Carolina's taking the lead over State now, 13 to 12 in the fourth quarter. Wow. Sounds like a good one in Columbia. Fourth down for the Deacons. They'll have to punt the football as Newsom backs up now to the 29-yard line to await the snap. Mississippi State leading Alabama, seven to three after one quarter. Ooh. Billy Davis back deep. Newsom hits the punt. He oh. hit a great one this time. Oh. Goes on into the end zone. So that's a punt that's going to cover 57 yards. As Newsom hits it into the end zone, it'll come out to the 20, and that's where the Tigers will take over first and 10. Oklahoma State 6. Missouri nothing in the first quarter. Texas 17. Texas Tech 3 in the second quarter. Michigan State leads Indiana 20 to 3 in the third. Auburn 7, Florida 6. That's in the second quarter of play. So now it's at the 20-yard line of the Tigers. Anthony Peretti has Brendan Kreit at fullback. I haven't picked up the tailback as of yet. It may be Duke Holloman. Yeah, it is. It's Holloman. He gets the call. Duke goes over the left side and cracks for six yards. Straight ahead out to the 26-yard line. Knocked down there by Tony Scott. Well, I'll tell you what the coaching staff up here is going to do. They're going to watch the fourth quarter down on the sideline. I think that's the earliest I've ever seen them leave their booth, Jim. We're next door to the Clemson coaching staff, and they're going down celebrate along the sidelines. Got a wide receiver out to the left side there that I'm not familiar with. That's uh, Fitz uh, Bethay. Uh, here's the give this time uh, off to Holloman again, and he rambles to the right side and has all kinds of running room as he's out over the 35 to the 38-yard line before Landis bring him down. Duke Holloman rushing twice, gets a first down plus. Crawford's in at full, or is that uh, Crawford? Crawford at fullback now. All right, uh, wide to the left side goes Richard Butler. No, he's to the right side. And out left is uh, Ronald Watson. There is Peretti riding it off straight ahead to Brendan Kreit. He'll crack over the 40 to the 42-yard line and be caught there by Kent Simon. Time runs out here in the third quarter of play. After three quarters, the score here at the Valley, Clemson 69, Wake Forest 17. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment.
Jerry Butler's little brother getting back in, I believe. Yeah, Richard's back in there. He'll go wide to the right side. And Crawford comes out wide to the left side as they go back in the eye formation behind Peretti at quarterback. Second down and six at the 46-yard line of the Deacons. Here is Brendan Kreit. Bowls straight ahead and gets tough yardage into the 42-yard line where Buchanan is up defensively along with Ferrero for the Demon Deacons. This crowd now has more or less settled back to just kind of enjoy themselves and watch a football game. Not much emotion being spent here right now. The score 69-17 with the Tigers on top. But you know, surprisingly, not that many people leaving. Well, they're not going to leave for a while. They're going to savor in this. Alley comes wide to the left side. Butler is split off right end. Peretti has them down. It's third down and three. Pitch back. Holloman sweeping outside. He's got the first down. He's across the 40 into the 35-yard line. So Duke Holloman running hard has the first down at the 35. And the Tigers keep this drive alive as Landis came across defensively for the Demon Deacons that time. Okay, this drive started at the 20. Here's been the pattern of runs, Jim. Holloman, Holloman. Kreit, Holloman, Kreit, Holloman, Kreit, Holloman. You think Kreit this time? You called it. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. The law, <laughs> the law of averages says yes. Beretti moves up under center. It's first and 10 at the 35-yard line, and it is Kreit. Over right tackle. Big hole. He's all the way down to the 26-yard line where he is hit by Ronnie Burgess, and Burgess had to reach out and grab him by the leg, or he may have gone all the way on that play. So it is spotted at the 26-yard line of the Deacons. Tell you, Scott, that's got to be a demoralized football team. All the injuries they came in here with, and then to have that many points thrown up against them, and and now Tigers down to third and fourth string personnel out there. But they comes to the near side. Then Crawford goes wide right. Peretti takes out. Pitch back. Holloman sweeping wide right. Cuts in behind a block at the 20. Down to the 18-yard line he goes. 15 seconds for station identification on the Clemson Football Network. Basically, Clemson only running two plays here, Jim. A pitch sweep to Holloman and just a blast to uh, Kreit. This should be Kreit. Let's see. Nope, Holloman. Holloman gets the call. Holloman at the 10 down to the 8-yard line goes Duke Holloman. Boy, there's a tailback of the future for you right there. Duke Holloman is running wild out here this afternoon. He is 6'2", 190 pounds, just a sophomore out of Myrtle Beach. Runs quite upright if you watch him, but he has great quickness. It's at the eight-yard line of the Deacons. It's first and goal Tigers. They lead it 69 to 17. Yeah, and you think of some of the athletes that have come out of Myrtle Beach to Clemson here. Butler wide to the left side. Pitch back again to Holloman at the five, down to the three-yard line before he is knocked down. Uh, 10.34 to go in the game. It will be second and goal from near the three-yard line, about the three and a half. Wake getting some new faces in to bolster up that front wall. A goal line defense will come in. All right, out they come. It's at the three-yard line. Second down and goal for the Tigers. They line up in the eye once again. Bay comes wide to the left side. Holloman, touchdown! I don't know, Scott. Holloman might get 100 yards at this rate. <laughs> He almost got it in that drive. Good gosh. Duke Holloman goes in to score. The sophomore from Myrtle Beach pops into the end zone. It's a 75 to 17 game. And we're going to get Lockie Brown on again to attempt the point after. We talked about Pauling having a shot at the record here today. If he'd have been in there kicking, he'd have had a shot at it, wouldn't he? Yes, that will be. Uh... Moretti will hold as we await the snap and Lockie Brown's attempt for the point after the spot. Kick is up. Kick is good. So there is time out on the field. 10.08 remaining in the game. The score, Tigers 76, Wake Forest 17. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Scott Chatton back here once again with Jim Phillips. Quiet an afternoon of football for Clemson Tiger fans. They've had fun. There was a penalty against Wake Forest. It has 
Has it been declined, Jim? I believe Clemson may have declined it. Uh, not necessarily yet. Official still discussing it out here. <laughs> Jeff has given me the update on the Tiger. It's now up to 458 push-ups in the afternoon. Uh, the Tigers will be kicking off from the Wake Forest 45-yard line. Owens and Cunningham will back up. Lockie Brown will again be kicking off. Now some of the folks begin to head for the parking lots in their cars. Still just a slow stream of people filing out of here. Still 10 minutes of football to go. Jeff, pull out the record back here again. Let's start looking for total points in games, where, yep. where this one ranks, how long it's been since the Tigers have put this many on the board. Lockie Brown to kick off from the Deacon 45. Hits it high end over end. He'll drive it into the end zone. Owens will field it nine yards deep into the end zone. Well, now they got the Deacon <laughs> over here doing push-ups. The Deacon is doing the push-ups. The Tiger has expired. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, that's, now that's great. I mean, that, that shows camaraderie between the cheerleading squads of both schools right there. And, <laughs> and what a hand the Deacon gets. In front of the Clemson student section. Oh, that's good. That's what college football is all about. Somebody asked me the other night whether I preferred the pro game to the college game. No way. That's what <laughs> makes it right there. Yes. Here's a pitch back to Cunningham, sweeping wide to his left. Cunningham comes out over the 25, gets out to the 27-yard line, and is knocked down there. The Demon Deacon of Wake Forest gets a big hug from a couple of the Tiger cheerleaders down there, a couple of the attractive ones. I tell you what, I might go down there and do push-ups. That'd be worth it. Now, now, now. Now, okay. All right. Here's Schofield riding it off to the first man through, and that is Cockerham, the uh, fullback, driving straight ahead. He gets the first down as he moves out over the 35 to about the 37, 38-yard line. And uh, Randy Learn was there defensively for the Tigers. Got Jeff making out a brand new spot sheet here on this game now as far as Tiger offense and defense goes. Schofield at quarterback. Rides it off again to Cockerham, and he dives straight ahead, gets near the 40, and that'll be it as he is hit down there. I want to say hello to the folks who listen to the games right here in Clemson on WCCP Radio over in Fountain Inn on WFIS on WLCM in Lancaster, on WGSW in Greenwood, WKYB in Hemingway, and WJME in Richland. Richland, that is. Wide right comes Tom Gregg as Schofield brings them out in the eye, has Bump Gardner split to the left side, Schofield back to throw. He's going to be sacked back around the 31, and getting to him to make the sack that time was who, Berlin? Steve Berlin. Yep, Steve Berlin got through to make the sack on him back at the 32-yard line they have marked it. It'll be third down, about 17 yards to go now for the Deacons. Wide left goes Greg. Schofield pitching it back. This again is uh, Cunningham sweeping wide to the right. A flag goes down as he cracks out to about the 35-yard line. And let's see what this one's all about. I don't think it's going to go against Wake, the way the official is pointing over here. Discussion now down at the 35-yard line by the officials. Eight minutes, nine seconds left in the game. 76 to 17, the Tigers leading. Blocking below the waist, called on Glenn Campbell, the right tackle. Uh, the Tigers may well take the play. They do, they decline. So it is at the 36-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and the Deacons will have to punt the football as Newsom again comes on, and Billy Davis will back up to receive for the Tigers. Tell you what, Steve Berlin just came to the sidelines. He looked like Lockie Brown. Now, they're not comparable in size, Scott, but he got the same <laughs> reception for that sack that Lockie's been getting for, for uh, the uh, uh, kicks here this afternoon. Newsom gets the kick off. He's a very highly regarded young man. Davis just going to let it hit. It rolls inside the 20 and will roll dead at about the 13-yard line. Now, let me give you a little statistic on Berlin here. He is a, a freshman out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, 6'5", 242 pounds. So he's pretty good size. Okay. 
Clemson's 10 largest victories. 122 to nothing over Guilford. 99 to nothing over Furman. 76 to nothing over Presbyterian. 75, 73, 68. We'll have to figure out the difference here. In victory margin. 76 and 17. All right, Peretti's in a quarterback. Got Lindsey in a fullback. Now he's listed as a linebacker. He's going to get the call, and straight ahead he goes. He bumps his way out over the 15 to about the 19-yard line. Otis Lindsey. Carrying to about the 19-yard line. Let's see. Otis Lindsey is a junior. 6'3", 230-pounder. Well, the difference uh, in points, Jim, will not be enough to get the Tigers into the top 10 of all-time biggest margins of victory. All right, out to the 20-yard line. That's Bassage. Kim Bassage comes straight ahead, moves out to the 20, a one-yard pickup. It's going to be third down, about three now for the Tigers. Seven minutes remaining in the football game. Well, I can't recall them ever putting 76 points on the board in the 14 years I've been doing the games. How about you, Scott? No. Around broadcasting? No, not at all. Pitch back. That is Bassett sweeping wide left, and he is just shy of the 25-yard line, but I believe has enough for a first down as he gets to the 24. Another first down for the Tigers. In fact, Jim, the, uh, the last time they put anything resembling a huge score like this on the board was in uh, 57. They beat Presbyterian 66 to nothing. All right, set to go again. Peretti brings them out at the 24-yard line. It is first and 10 for the Tigers. Peretti riding it off to Bassett, straight ahead over the 25, moves out to the 28-yard line and is knocked down there. So it is at the 28, where it is a four-yard pickup, second down, six yards to go for the Tigers. Richard Butler going wide to the right side. We've got people on, oh, Crawford. Craig Crawford is split left now. Peretti has them down in the eye. Really having problems keeping up with all these numbers. Oh, over the middle, straight ahead, 40, midfield, down the sidelines, goes Otis Lindsay at the 10, five, touchdown. Otis Lindsay. And look at the pile in the end zone as Otis Lindsay just goes 71 yards for a touchdown. Or a change in numbers? Okay, take that back. It's Craig Crawford now. He's wearing 44. We had him listed in uh, number 48. And that's not Bassage in 40, that's Vereen in 40? Okay. All I know is that Craig Crawford just rolled 71 yards to pay dirt, and it's an 82 to 17 game, and Lockie Brown's on again. Snap, spot, Lockie's kick is up. His kick is no good. It drifts off wide to the right. Holy cow, 540 left in this game. Timeout on the field. The score, Clemson 82, Wake Forest 17. We'll be back with more Clemson Tiger football on the USA Cable Network in just a moment. Okay, Jim, the margin now is 65 points. That would... Uh, Moved them into a tie, uh, eighth place, all-time largest margin, but this thing isn't over yet. 5.40 to go in the game, 82 points, 17 for Wake Forest. The only thing the Tigers have done wrong all afternoon is Lockie Brown missed a couple of points after. I don't think anybody's going to get on him about that. Tut dropped a touchdown or two, but caught <laughs> another one or two. So, <laughs> Oh, what an incredible day. I believe he's going to get a chance to kick off here, isn't he? 99 points on the board right now. What? Hey, wait a minute. There's a Nancy AA record for points in a game. Furman and Davidson hold that. What is that? Uh, I, that game was something like 56-49 or something a couple of years back. I remember the game. So was it 107, something like that? Uh, uh, I'll have to get your NCAA book here and check it out. There's Rocky Brown's high end over end kick. It's going to be into the end zone. He hit it. And he hit it from the 40 that time. So they'll bring it out to the 20. 
Now we find out, and I, I'm going to have to apologize firsthand to some of these youngsters after the game. Uh, uh, especially I'm going to have to apologize to Craig Crawford because I was calling him Otis Lindsay for 71 yards, but that was the number that was on our sheet here. Uh, we find now that Pete Demery is in number 48, which we had Craig Crawford listed in earlier, so a lot of changes here. Back to throw Schofield, flips it out on the right side, complete to Greg. Greg comes up over the 30 and out to the 34-yard line and is knocked down there. And Clemson defenders with strange-looking numbers out there. Arrington's around the play. Also out there around the play on that particular uh, one was number 31, and he's not on our depth chart here. Many, many folks having an opportunity to play football dressed in tiger orange here today. And many, many points have been put on the board. Pitch back, wide left goes Owens. In pursuit of him, knocking him down that time was Jim Scott, defensive tackle, got him behind the line of scrimmage, back around the 33-yard line. You know something, and I believe there's a flag at the point of the ball. Someone hit a little late over there for the Tigers. That'll cost 15. These third and fourth unit players, and in some cases, fifth unit players, are playing against Wake's number one offense and doing a darn good job of shutting them down. Well, they're playing with great intensity, too, because they don't have an opportunity to play that many times, Scott. Now, they're taking advantage of it. They work on the practice field. They have learned to, to be just as intense as the first and second string has, and now they're having a chance to vent that enthusiasm. Schofield again takes out. Back to throw, rush on him, fires over the middle, completes it to Denfield. Denfield down the sidelines at the 40 and bounced out of bounds in the vicinity of the 30-yard line. Across the way to make the tackle on him was Ronald Watson. Four minutes, 50 seconds remaining in this football game this afternoon. There goes that number 31 back in. If you put the glasses on the back of his shirt, you might get a name. I'm not certain. I got somebody wearing Igwe Buike's number over there playing defensive back, Jim. You're right. I see him. All right. The give is to Owen. Straight ahead he goes. Somebody wearing number 18 out there, and it's not Donald. No, it's not Donald. But they do have numbers that repeat. Uh, once you get through 99, you know you got to start repeating. I remember one time, uh, the 72 season, you and I went to Oklahoma for the Clemson-Oklahoma game, and Oklahoma dressed about 120 people. And it was really strange to look at the sideline, see two number 70s standing side by side. All right, Schofield going to throw on second down, fires over the middle, completes it to Denfield again, down around the 20-yard line. I don't know if he has the yardage for the first down or not. A couple of Tiger defenders. Mark Richardson was in on that tackle along with a couple of others. Clock is stopped now with four minutes, eight seconds to go in the game. Okie dokie. They are going to bring the chain sticks in to take a look at this one now to see whether or not he has the yardage for the first down. Four minutes and eight seconds. That's what the scoreboard clock says. 82 to 17. Number 31 is Cliff McClellan. Is that that's, Cliff McClellan? That's the ADs. That's the A.D. son is right. Yes. All right. Having a ball out there this afternoon playing football. <laughs> Wide to the right comes Ryan. Uh, Slot to the right side. Schofield being chased, rolling right, looking to throw. Now firing. It is incomplete down at the 10-yard line. His intended receiver was Tom Gregg, but thrown off his hands and out of bounds, and Cliff McClellan was back on coverage for the Tigers. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm looking down in that box there, and Bill McClellan is a happy daddy right now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't know how many Danny dressed out for this game today, but uh, well, we learned now that McClellan well, may be 98 rather than 31. <laughs> we'll check it out. I don't know. Back to throw, Schofield. Being chased out of the pocket. Going to run, and he's going to get enough for a first down as he's inside the 10 down to about the 7-yard line. Schofield found his receivers all covered broke up the middle and broke into the clear down to the seven yard line where it'll be first and goal and that time it was cliff mcclellan who made the tackle number 98. you know we had talked about several individual things this afternoon one thing we gotta think about is that all-time total offense record all right the ride goes off to the fullback cockerham and he drives straight ahead to about the five maybe the four yard line of course, we won't know about that till well after the game's over, and it may take a couple of computers to add all this stuff up. 